In this video, we'll be talking about single hose versus dual hose portable air conditioners. Now, before we can do so, we need to talk about portable air conditioners themselves and how they work. A portable air conditioner is just like every other AC system. It has an evaporator, a condenser, and a compressor. So the evaporator is the part of the AC system that gets cold. It is the part of the AC system that cools the air. So on this unit we have on the table here today, and this is the back of the unit, the top back of the unit, you can see the evaporator very clearly here. Uh, the air is pulled over that evaporator. It then travels up and through the top front of the unit here. Uh, so that is the part of the AC system that cools the air. On the flip side of things, we have the hot part of the AC system. And the most prominent hot component there is the condenser. The condenser is right inside here. So the condenser gets very hot. The condenser needs to be cooled. So just as much as this unit is pulling in air to cool, uh, via the, its evaporator up here, it's also pulling in air from the room to cool its condenser. So the condenser is hot, the evaporator is cold. Uh, so each of these components is doing two different things to the air. The difference is that the air that is pulled over the evaporator goes back into the room. The air that is pulled over the condenser is eventually exhausted out here. Uh, the duct isn't installed here on this particular unit, but the air is exhausted through this grill here, through a duct, and that duct travels to a bracket on your window and then to the outdoors. So the air that is used to cool the condenser inside here is eventually evacuated out of the room. Now this presents one of the most critical inefficiencies for portable air conditioners. They are essentially taking air inside of the room and then moving that air to the outdoors without replacing the air. And what that does is it creates an area of low pressure inside of the room that is being conditioned. And that area of low pressure compared to the high pressure outside, causes air from the outside, which is at a higher pressure relative to the air inside the room, to get pulled into the room. So there's this pressure gradient that is constantly trying to pull air from the outdoors into the room, and air does find its way into the room. And that contributes heat into the room, which is doing exactly the opposite of what you want to do. You want to cool the room. And that is a major inefficiency for single hose, portable air conditioners especially is this whole idea of this pressure difference that is causing outdoor air to want to get pulled into the room. Another major inefficiency involves the duct itself. On a single hose unit, there is a single duct here that exhausts the hot air out of the room. And that single duct is usually made of a thin plastic material that is a large diameter. So there's a lot of surface area for heat to radiate away from that hose. And the hose is actually physically hot because it is carrying hot air. It is carrying the air that was used to cool the condenser. That air is now hot because it was used to cool the condenser. So that hose, the, the duct on the back of the unit, that hose is radiating heat back into the room that you are actively working to cool. So that is another major inefficiency for these portable air conditioners. Now, in this case, we have a situation where the dual hose units do worse than the single hose units. Remember for single hose units, the infiltration air is a major concern. For dual hose units, the heat added by ducting is more of a concern. Why? Because there are two ducts instead of one. With the single hose units, you have one duct that is radiating heat back into the room. With a dual hose unit, you now have two ducts radiating heat back into the room. So there, the inefficiency is more pronounced with a dual hose unit. Now, dual hose units have other inefficiencies as well. The addition of a second hose causes more air gaps in the system. There are all kinds of minor gaps that can be created in the connection where the hose is connected to the back of the unit here. There are minor air gaps that are created when that hose is connected to the window bracket. There are now two holes, remember, there are two holes in the window bracket instead of one with dual hose unit. So there's just more potential for air gaps with a dual hose unit. There are less potential for air gaps with a single hose unit. Uh, of course, you can tape over those air gaps. There's a variety of ways that you can mitigate those air gaps, that you can mitigate the flow of air through those air gaps. However, there's just more potential with a dual hose unit, and that is an important thing to note here. Uh, another inefficiency with a dual hose unit is the fact that it is using warm outdoor air to cool its condenser. Remember, a single hose unit uses the cool indoor air to cool its condenser. So it is much colder than the condenser, so it can cool it much more efficiently. A dual hose unit uses warm outdoor air. Now that warm outdoor air is still cooler than the condenser. That's why it can even be used in the first place. However, it is not nearly as cold as cool room air, and therefore it does not cool the condenser as efficiently. So there's more work to be done there to cool the condenser. The whole system cannot operate as efficiently because the condenser is not cooled as efficiently. Finally, and this is a very minor complaint, but when you first set up the system with a dual hose unit, 
uh, there are more hoses to deal with. There's more difficulty involved in installation there just because you have an additional hose to work with and you don't have that disadvantage with a single hose unit. There's only a single hose to work with with the installation there. So it is a little bit easier to install a single hose unit. Now, when it comes to deciding between a single hose and a dual hose unit, there is a common misconception that we see online where a dual hose unit is almost always recommended above all else simply because it is a dual hose unit. Uh, a lot of online publications recommend dual hose units because they don't have that infiltration air problem to the same extent. Now, first of all, understand that even though they do add that secondary hose, many of them still do take room air to cool the condenser. On the Winter Arc 14S, for example, there is an actual small grill on the back of the unit where it intakes cool room air to contribute to the air that it uses to cool its condenser. So it does not exclusively use outdoor air to cool the condenser. It still uses indoor air to a certain extent. But the more important thing that we need to talk about here is seasonally adjusted cooling capacity. Now in the past, units would be measured by a much less stringent testing method to determine the actual BTU cooling capacity of the unit. Today, we have seasonally adjusted cooling capacity. Seasonally adjusted cooling capacity fully takes into account the heat added by the ducting, the heat added by the infiltration air for both single hose and dual hose systems. So what that allows you to do is you can now compare a single hose unit to a dual hose unit solely based on the sack values of each unit. The unit with the higher sack is going to be the better unit in terms of performance, regardless of whether it is a dual hose or single hose unit or anything like that. If it has a higher sack, it is going to be able to cool better because sack fully takes into account any advantages or disadvantages one system might have compared to the other. So if you are comparing two units, compare the sack. Don't compare whether it is a single hose or a dual hose. Use the sack value to determine the performance. If a particular single hose unit has a higher sack than a particular dual hose unit, it will cool a room faster. It will cool a room to lower temperatures. That is just a fact. We saw it ourselves when we tested these units. We tested high sack units in a 150 square foot room that were single hose units. Those units cooled the room very quickly and cooled it very effectively. We tested the Winter Arc 14S, a dual hose unit in the same room under the exact same conditions, and it took much longer to cool the room. That is just a fact. There's no way around it. It didn't cool the room as fast. Why did it not cool the room as fast? Because it has a lower sack value. The Winter Arc 14S sits at about 8,900 BTUs on the sack scale, high sack units in the same traditional BTU category, meaning the 14,000 BTU category, those units have a sack around 9,500 to 10,000 BTUs. So they have a higher sack, they can cool the room faster. So the takeaway here is use sack to determine the performance differences between different units. Do not use whether they are a single hose or a dual hose unit. Yes, it is interesting to see how these different units work and it is interesting to see how infiltration air is more of an issue with one, while heat added by ducting is more of an issue with the other. But the bottom line here is that SAC takes into account all of that, and all you need to do is compare those two different SAC values to determine the difference in performance between two different portable air conditioners.